Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how you can place an image in line with text in your Squarespace website. Now there are quite a few steps to make this magic happen and I have listed them in the description below, but let's hop on into my demo site so I can show you exactly how this works. So here we are in my Squarespace site. I happen to be using version 7.1, but this code will work for any version of Squarespace. These are the three steps that we're going to do. We're going to add a markdown block with a special placeholder for the images that we want to have in line with the text. Then we're going to upload the images to our custom files. And after that, we're going to update the custom code to match the image URL for the image that we've uploaded. And we'll customize it to place the images in the spots that we've created in that markdown block. You ready to get started? All right, let's do this together. Scrolling down here, I'm gonna hop into edit mode and let's go ahead and add a markdown block. I'm just gonna type markdown, we'll grab the block, there we go. Now you can use basic HTML in a markdown block and I'd like to use my heading one font so this is a lot bigger than the other fonts on my site. So I'll say H1 and we'll add some text and let's go ahead and place our first image. If you're watching this on YouTube, I can't use these carrots in a YouTube description, so head on over to my blog. I have a link in the description below. That's where you can grab the exact code that I'm typing in here. So I've added a left carrot, and I'll say span class equals, and don't worry about what you're seeing down here. All of that stuff is gonna go away after we enter this information. It says data preserve HTML node. Don't worry about all that stuff, okay? We've said span class equals, and we've inserted some quotation marks. I'm gonna say image one, and then we'll close it with the right caret. I'm gonna add two zeros for some placeholder text, and then we'll do a left caret, forward slash span, right caret. Now it's super duper important. You can label it anything you want. Just make sure you remember what that label is because we're gonna use that label in CSS to place the image there. So I've added some text and I've added a class. Let's add a few more places because I've got three images that I want to use. So we'll say here is a second, I'll paste it here, but instead of image one, I need to give it a different name. It's a different image. So I'll say image two, and we'll go ahead and add a third one. And again, I need to change the name because I want a different image. So I'll say image three and finish the sentence. There we go. So now we have these three sets of placeholders here, these double zeros. We're going to replace those with images. Step two is to upload our images to our custom files, and then we'll use these labels right here to add that image URL so the two zeros will be replaced with the image we want to see. Ready to keep going? Let's do this. On to step two. I'll go ahead and select save, and we're gonna navigate to design, and then we'll scroll down to custom CSS on the bottom. Now at the very bottom of your CSS panel, you're gonna see a button that says manage custom files. I want you to click on that button, and then from your computer, just drag and drop the images right there so they're uploaded to your site. There's the first image, there's the second image, and here is the third image that I'm going to use. Now that they've been uploaded to my site, they're gonna get their own URL, and we're gonna update this code with that URL. Now remember when I said pay attention to what you labeled those placeholders? Here you'll see them again. It says image one, image two, and image three. So let's go ahead and take this code. Oops, we'll scroll up there. I'm gonna paste this here in my custom CSS and instantly you'll see those zeros have gone away. We went ahead and changed them to transparent. So what we're gonna do is place an image behind them. First image URL here is just some placeholder text. I'm gonna remove that. We'll click manage custom files and I'll click on my first image. And check it out, my little dancing dinosaur is right there in line with the text. Now we've said background size cover, that makes sure it will keep its aspect ratio so the image won't get weirdly stretched and it'll cover the whole spot. And then we all, we've all we also said background repeat, no repeat. I only want one instance of the image. So those two parts of the code, just leave them alone. Now let's scroll down and we'll add another one for image two, for our image two placeholder. Let's remove this URL, select manage custom files and click on the second dinosaur that's eating a slice of pizza. And there we go, now it's in line with the text. And then we've got one more, a third image. Again, we'll remove that URL, click Manage Custom Files, and place the third one right there. And we're good to go. Now you'll see these images, they are in line with the text, but they are a little bit larger than the text. That's just the spacing that we have there. So if you run into the same problem, you can increase the line height for your particular code block. I'm going to grab the block ID using a Chrome extension that I use, not affiliated, just a fan. I'll be sure to link it below. And at the very bottom of my code here, let's add a new line of code. And I'm gonna say H1 
line height 6 REM and that will allow a little bit more space between those places. So one other thing I wanted to teach you was how to actually change the shape of these images if you wanted them to be round and have a border. We can do that with a little bit of CSS. Let's start with the first image. I'll add a semicolon and I'll say border radius 50%. That'll make it round. And then I'll add a semicolon and I'll say border 1px solid and we'll make it a solid red. Now we can do the same thing for the other images. I'm going to go ahead and copy this and we'll add a semicolon to image two. But instead of red, let's make this one blue. And scrolling down here, we'll add a semicolon for image three and paste the code. But instead of red, we'll say green. And now we have a unique border and a unique shape for each one of those images. So you can add any other custom code to your images to style that image that's in line with the text. However you decide to customize it, just select save when you're done and you'll be good to go. You'll find all the steps and all the code information listed in the description below so you can try this out on your own website. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Give me a like and a comment if you did and definitely subscribe to my channel because I post a brand new Squarespace tutorial every single week and I want to make sure you catch the latest. Thanks again for watching and most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. If you liked this tutorial, you're going to love my Squarespace CSS cheat sheet. I put all of my custom codes and pro tips inside one gigantic PDF available now at insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS.